All right, let me uh, share a few announcements with you. The order of service is printed in the book. I am not using amplification today because it always screeches and spit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can't hear me in the back, that means you should move up. Stop yawning. I don't want to have to call names out, Kathy. Um, we'll sing the hymns. There are only two of them. We'll sing them as printed. Yes, the piano will sound a little grainy because it's hooked up to a a guitar amplifier, so it'll sound like a guitar. So that'll be fun. Um, communion this morning will be, we'll have two stations. It's the, we believe that this is the Lord's table and that the Lord invites us all to celebrate that holy meal. So just move to a station closest to you at that time, receive the wafer, dip it into the wine, which is red, or the juice, which is yellow, eat, and then return back to the seat. And while you're wandering around, don't forget to find an offering plate. We've strategically placed them so at, to your convenience to make sure that you put your offering in, okay? If you, if you need other assistance with that, ask an <laughs> um, Welcome to Alexander Butramowitz's family and friends who are clustered over here. They wanted to sit together, I don't know why. Um, but we're grateful that you're all here and that we can celebrate a baptism. Amy and Bill, you know, are the only members of this congregation who insist on having children at the particular time of the year to allow us to do an outdoor baptism on Rally Day. Because Ada was baptized right out here on the lawn a few years ago, and now Alex is being baptized today. So I don't know what's up. Um, Amy, your dad, or somebody said it has something to do with tax season. <laughs> so we welcome that crew with us today. Um, please note that there were a variety of announcements. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with them. But Chris Anders, where are you? Right here. Chris is right in the front row. I like that. Um, we still have a couple of slots left for the Dubuque fall color trip. You can talk to Chris about that. She is also searching for people to donate food for Road Home. Road Home guests move into our building next week. And so she needs some food donations for that. She has a sign-up sheet somewhere. Um, we'll let her tell you about that. But talk to her, because we do need food donations. John wants you to know that dartball season is starting, and if you want to play dartball, you should talk to John. Um, does anybody from Lakeview play dartball? I'm the only one right You're the now. only one. John's the only one. So if you want to give John a team, talk to John. All right? And he'll fill you in on what Dark Bowl is all about. Um, two weeks from today, I want to draw your attention to a special speaker. Eleanor Siebert will be here to talk about the ELC malaria campaign. She'll be here between services. Um, I'd encourage you all to be a part of that because we are going to be pursuing that um, and doing it off. We've set a goal for $5,000 to raise in this congregation for the malaria campaign. So uh, check in with Eleanor. And then um, this week, there is choir rehearsal resumes on Thursday night at 7 o'clock in the sanctuary. Lynn says anybody could come. I sort of like to know in advance because I want to decide if I want you there or not. But it, so it depends on who you talk to. For me, it's an audition thing. For Lynn, anybody can come. That's why Dana is part of choir. Um, so come on over to choir. Honestly, we'd like everybody to be a part of choir. We should have more people in choir than we do in the congregation when we, when we sing. So come on Thursday night. I, there's a variety of other things I'll let you read through that. A new church directory is coming. Um, you can watch for dates and times and all that kind of stuff in the near future, but we're excited about that. A committee um, is working on that right now, so you can keep, keep posted for that. At this point in time, I invite you to turn to those around you, and you're welcome to stand up if you want. And greet the saints who have gathered here on this beautiful, not sunny, that's what makes it beautiful. She can't see you. Hi, Carrie. Good morning. Okay, now sit down. Simon says sit down. 
morning. Good morning. Zip it! Simon says zip it! <laughs> <laughs> we ignore him pretty good, don't we? must be from Iowa because you keep saying things that don't make sense. <laughs> We begin our worship service with the opening dialogue. Since Abraham and Sarah, since Mary and Paul, since Luther and Muhlenberg, since 1987 in Columbus, Ohio, at the constituting convention of the ELCA, we gather to you, O oh God. We gather to you, O oh God. Here is the word of life. Here is the water of rebirth. Here is the meal of mercy. And here, surrounding us, is the grateful assembly. Gather us to you, O oh God. Gather us to you, O oh God. We gather this morning wet from the water. We gather this morning listening to the word. We gather this morning already the body of Christ. Come now, Holy Spirit, and gather us in love. Come, Holy Spirit, and gather us in love. You may remain seated as we sing the three verses of the Lord. to uh, follow along and respond as appropriately as we turn to the thanksgiving at the clock. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh God, of plenteous grace, for the waters you provide the earth. For snow and dew, for oceans and wells, for the rain that nourishes plants and trees. For the streams that enliven the animals, great and small. For lakes Mendota, Monona, and Wingra, and the Yahara and the Wisconsin rivers, we praise you, O oh God, for water. 
We pray to you, O God, for water. Blessing and glory be to you, O God of abundant mercy, for your word that flows with life-giving waters, for the story of the fountain that gushed from the rock, for the memory of the Jordan that immersed your Son in our sorrows, for the living rivers that flow from the cross, for the reconciling waters of baptism which, around which we have gathered this morning. We bless you, O God, for water and the word. We bless you, O God, for water and the word. At this thought we pray, pour upon us yet again the spirit of our baptism. Our roots are dry. Shower us with divine blessing. Our fruits need moisture. Renew us for vibrant growth. Wash away the sin within us and drown the evil around us. We beg you, O God, for water and the spirit. We thank you, O God, for water and spirit. You, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are the water we crave. You, O God, are rain and river and fountain, life for us all, now and forever. Amen. And together we confess our baptismal faith this morning as we speak the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. When I talked to Amy and Bill about baptism this morning, they told me that they tried to find a name for their baby. They utilized all 26 letters of the alphabet, and I think they did really well. So I invite you to bring Alexander William Butromowitz to the front of the room. <laughs> Alexander William Butchamowitz, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us pray. We give thanks to you, O God, that through water and the Spirit you give your daughters and sons a new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain, Alexander, with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. 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 Alexander, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Amen. Your name? I didn't do that. <laughs> this could be a problem. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. We present you with the gift of this faith chest, lovingly made by the members of Lake We believe faith is taught, not taught. Hope that this chest will be a lifelong reminder of God's <laughs> 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 well, Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you, you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. <laughs> to you, O God, hear God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Right here. I think we got a tenor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now remember, he was doing that before I took it. <laughs> the gospel and only lesson for today as we celebrate um, 
Rally Day here at Lakeview, and we celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. We read from John chapter 15. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. God removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, God prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branch. Those who, who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. If you are my friends, you are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these words, these commandments, so that you may love one another. I didn't like kids to come up. Not confirmation kids, little kids, Jerry, not you. <laughs> Sunday school kids, kids who want to go to Sunday school, visitor kids, come on up. Sunday school visitors, come on up. I love you. Come on over. Let's give the kids a hand. They're all us. I'm wearing a shirt that says something. Is there anybody here from a good school district that can read my shirt? <laughs> but don't you go to Cottage Grove? <laughs> do they teach you reading out there? Really? Because they don't do that in the forest. <laughs> what does my shirt say? God's work in our hands? Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> God's work our hands. What does that mean? Who's got an idea? What does that mean? God's work, our hands. You know? Yeah, I know. It's your brother holding up your hands. Okay. Who's got an idea? What do you think that means? Anybody? Well, what do you think that means? What? What happened? What happened? God's work, our hands. What do you think it means? Ben, you got an idea? God what? God works your hands. Not a bad shot there, Ben. It is through our hands that we do what God needs, needs to be done here on earth. God came to redeem the earth. God came to bring the earth justice and fairness to the people. And now God calls on us to do that. Because is God standing right here doing it? He's using us, through us. God is right here working our hands, right? You got hands? You got to work them, don't we, Tasha? Yeah, Tasha's working them. Work them, baby. God's work our hands. Now I got a little thing for you. In the crowd, there are some people that have this shirt on. 
If you find them right now and say to them, God's work our hands, they're going to give you something. So go find them and see what you can get. All right? But you got to say it. God's work our hands. You can try them all. There are three of them. They all stayed in the bush. Make sure you tell them all. zone, but prefer to stay in your easy chair in front of your television at home, then you should probably go home right now. Any takers? Yeah, too bad. Now on the flip side of that, if your church is not asking you to get messy, I suggest something's wrong. If your church isn't asking you to donate money or to donate your time, I'd suggest you consider talking to your church and finding out if they really do ministry. If your church never expects you to leave your comfort zone and get uncomfortable, then maybe your church has a poor understanding of what it means to be a disciple of Christ. When we go beyond simply believing in Jesus and become followers of Jesus, it means that we will get serious about the commandments that Jesus gives us. When we follow Jesus, we take seriously the words that we heard in the gospel lesson this morning, the words that Jesus says to us, love one another as I have loved you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go out and bear fruit. In the church, we understand that if we have been freed by Christ, that we have been freed by Christ to go out and to love and to serve our neighbors. Christ has freed us from having to develop a relationship on our own with God. Christ has made that happen. Christ has therefore freed us to go out and get messy, to go out and to share our resources, to leave the comforts of our lives and our homes so that we can make the lives of others more comfortable. Thank you. I feel so baptist <laughs> uh, you got to work on it. I know. Yeah. Your church, and if your visitor is with us and part of your church, otherwise you're coming from a good church too, but your church, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, does indeed have a motto. What is it? How come only six people knew that? <laughs> What's the motto? God's work our hands. God's work our hands. God's work is to bring freedom and justice and equality to the world. God sent Jesus in as, as an example to us who laid down his life for his friends. God sent Jesus to seek justice and compassion and love for all of God's creation. And we're right out here in this beautiful creation in front of history, in front of 1960s 
with no sun in the sky, which is actually a good thing because we're not too hot, okay? God sent Jesus to take care of creation, and Jesus now calls on us to continue to do that work, to continue the work of God with our hands, with our feet, with our mouths. You know my motto, if you got one, use it, and I do, to use our mouths, our feet, our hands, and our hearts to do God's work. And Jesus reminds us in that gospel lesson today that when we do that, when we adhere to the work of justice, we bring glory to God. In August, our middle school youth who was on that trip to Milwaukee, there are some of them surrounding you. A middle school youth spent an afternoon at Reformation Lutheran Church. Reformation Lutheran is located on 35th Street and North Avenue in the city of Milwaukee. It's located in a neighborhood where the neighbors around the church are struggling. They're struggling because of a lack of good jobs. You know what happens in a city? Jobs move from the center outside to the suburbs, and then the people who are left have a difficult time finding adequate work. People in that neighborhood are struggling because of skin color. There's still racism in Milwaukee. The ugliest statistic, I know, I love that city, but an ugly statistic is it's one of the most racist cities in the United States. We've got to fix that. They're also struggling in that neighborhood because there's an extremely high crime rate, probably a result of drug use. Our youth that day sorted clothes and hung them on, on clothing racks and moved beds and did all kinds of work. They filled backpacks with new school supplies for families who couldn't afford to purchase those supplies. Good, clean, slightly used clothing at low prices from the food, from the clothing store and school supplies that are free are what the neighbors at Reformation Lutheran Church are in need of. God's work, our hands. And then when our youth got done there, they went across town to cross Lutheran Church the next day and they served 123 hot meals that noon to people who showed up at cross. They worked in the AO, they also attended AODA groups. The people at Cross Lutheran Church know that their neighbors need nutritious and healthy meals in that part of town. The people at Cross have responded with a meal program and a garden. God's work, our hands. Tuesday afternoon, I was riding my bike up in Columbia County. You may wonder what I was doing riding my bike in the middle of a work day, but I just like to take time off periodically. You don't know that because you're not here. <laughs> Chris Andrews said it was okay for me to leave early, so I did because she's always in charge. And while I was riding my bike, I saw people out in the field baling hay and piling it on wagons, and the sweat was pouring off from them. And I thought, yeah, I grew up in the country. I know that that hay is going to go and feed cattle, and that those cattle are going to produce milk and meat, and a lot of you except Dana are going to eat that meat and drink that milk. And then I remembered and had an, a, an appreciation for how much work is involved in keeping a food producing farm running smoothly. God's work, our hands. In 2011, the ELCA, our church, agreed to raise $15 million to end malaria deaths in Africa. 665,000 people die every year in Africa because of malaria. And you know what? It's completely preventable. Nobody has to die from that disease. Malaria, the malaria campaign in the ELCA is meant to raise money to define clean water, to provide mosquito nets, to provide quality education about malaria, and to make inoculations available in locations that are difficult to receive them. We here at Lakeview, I've probably said this already, we have set a goal of raising $5,000 by October 20th to contribute to the pool of money being raised by our church. Each one of you is gonna be asked boldly to make a contribution to that campaign in the upcoming weeks. Each of you will be asked to share money for this life-saving ministry. God's work, our hands. Next Sunday, 
15 people, most of them are going to be children, will be moving into our building and sleeping in those Sunday school rooms where our kids will be meeting for Sunday school the following week. The, the people moving in will be homeless, as you're well aware. It will take over 60 of you to provide, to be volunteers, to provide and cook meals, to provide activities, to unload vans, to load vans, to make beds, to do laundry, to donate food, to sleep overnight, to assure that those families have a clean, safe place to be for the week. It's not an easy job to be a volunteer in the Road Home program. It can even be messy, and some of you have experienced some very messy situations at Road Home. It will take up some of your precious time that you could be using for something else. It will push you far beyond your comfort zones. God's work, our hands. Today, you brought toilet paper. Doesn't everybody bring toilet paper to church? It seems perfectly normal to me, and believe me, over the years of doing the toilet paper run to the food pantry as part of the service, I've heard every joke possible that could come up over that. You know, things like, does it have to be you new, or can it be slightly used? I hope you all brought new toilet paper. <laughs> Now, it may seem a little crazy to some that we do this toilet paper thing every year, and perhaps it is a little crazy, but as we pass that toilet paper around the building, down the road, into the food pantry, we remember this. Jesus never criticized someone for acting a little crazy. In fact, if you read those stories, he embraced them and loved them dearly. God's work our hands. I give thanks on a regular basis that I belong to a denomination like the ELCA and to a congregation like this at Lakeview Lutheran Church. I give thanks because in those, in those organizations, people understand, you, people in the church, understand that in order to accomplish our call of loving one another, we have to get messy and do some things. We have to be willing to share our resources. We have to be willing to share our money and the other things that we have access to, like toilet paper. We understand that we have to get dirty. Sometimes we get dirty and very messy. You should have seen us last week after we got done dug digging dirt out of a basement in Boscobel where flooding had occurred. We were filthy. Well, I was. Perhaps I was the only one doing any work. Amen. Amen. We understand in this congregation and through the ELCA that we do indeed need to leave our comfort zones sometimes. Remember those of you who went on that very first work trip after Hurricane Katrina? We ended up in Biloxi, Mississippi at 8.30 at night, and we were told, you get to sleep over there in that circus tent with 80 other men and women from around the country with beds that far apart. That's leaving your comfort zone. <laughs> Jan Pond isn't here, I would make fun of her. We realize in this church that we will need to love those people who sometimes we think may be unlovable. You all know who I'm talking about. So I do indeed routinely give thanks that I am part of a movement, the ELCA, this congregation, a movement that is willing to respond to Jesus' words. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. God's work, our hands, amen. I'll invite Amy Lukey forward. If you don't know that Amy is our Sunday school superintendent, this would be a good time to learn that. Yeah, yeah. And I should also point out that her Sunday School Superintendent assistants are Dane and Ben Lukey, who, when you are the children of a Sunday School Superintendent, you routinely get told, do this, do that, right? So let's give it up for Dane and Ben! Amy's going to invite the Sunday School staff forward.
for our preschool class, Monica Dyer. Monica, Annette, move it. Annette Pownell <laughs> and Megan Thornburg. That's the best you could do? <laughs> K through one. We get them installed because they're nothing right now, but in a minute. <laughs> Our Lord, who came among us as a servant, calls us to faith in a life of loving service to our neighbors. You, study so fast, stand among us as one called to render this particular service with our children. You are a gift from God to inspire us to love and to do good works. From St. Matthew we read, Then children were, bought to Je were brought to Jesus, that he may lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked the people, but Jesus said to them, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for such to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Will you assume this ministry in the confidence that it comes from God? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures, the confessions, and the confessions of the Lutheran Church? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and your faithful use, and be faithful in your use of the means of grace and in prayer? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you trust in God's care? Seek to grow in love for those you serve. Strive for excellence in your skills and adorn the gospel of God with a godly life. If so, answer, I will and I ask God to help me. I will and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously now give you the strength and the compassion to perform them. Amen. Now you may clap for them. They are so <laughs> Next, I'd like to introduce the Sunday School Youth as I read your names. Will you please come forward? Nicole Campbell, Caitlin Bukta. <laughs> oh, I got shoved up on the table. Forward, where are you? There you go. Jacob Curl. Dane Lukey, Jack McGee, Kristen Dyson, Corey Walter, Ian Mikoski, Ann Braithwaite, Anthony Debray. Feel sorry for me, this is what I got. <laughs> and I look forward to it. Now, we just got to do a little something here. If you go to school in Sun Prairie, raise your hand. Okay, she'd be the smart one. If you go to school in Wanakee, raise your hand. Okay, well, whatever. Um, if you go to school in Madison, raise your hand. If you go to school in DeForest, raise your hand. How did I get so many DeForest kids in this school? It's going to be a scary year. Go sit down. Let's give them a hand. to sing Let Us Break Bread together, so let's do that now. Yeah, if you could move to the piano bench, I'd invite you to turn to page five. You may remain seated as we sing the hymn.
Lord, for the gift of your marvelous creation made evident around us this morning. Thank you for creating us to care for it and to use it wisely. Thank you for your church, for the ELCA and for Lakeview Lutheran. Although we have done many things to alleviate hunger and poverty, prevent us from becoming arrogant about our work and make us mindful that there is still much to be done. Guide all upcoming decisions that government leaders will make about Syria. We pray for a response that will preserve life and land. Be with the people of Puerto Rico and others who are in the path of Tropical Storm Gabriel. Make yourself known to all those who are the victims of the Yosemite wildfire, including those fighting it. Watch over all college students as they begin a new year. Bring comfort to the parents and families who have recently sent children off to school. Move the people of Lakeview to respond to malaria. Give us hands that will reach into wallets, hearts that will be open to education, and heads that will be compassionate toward victims. Comfort all those who are grieving this morning, especially those known to the individual found in the Warner Park Lagoon on Friday. Bring healing to anyone who struggles with health, including Cassidy Hicks, Holly Norton, Dar Ishmael, Irene Pabecki, Joe Doherty, Milt Harris, Tom Brundle, and Irma Collins. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Shut her off. <laughs> continue with the thanksgiving at the table. We praise you, O holy God, our maker, our lover, our keeper. Nurturing our past, our present, and our future. For the universe beyond our knowing, for seas and forests and fields. For the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the continent, For creatures seen and unseen, for animals both wild and tame, for, for our ancestors from many cultures, and for all the places we humans call home, for cities and churches and schools. For the Indian Church in America, for the South Central Synodal Wisconsin, for the Lakeview Lutheran Church in Wisconsin. We praise you for your covenant people, for Moses and Miriam and Aaron. For traditions of prayer and praise. And for centuries of faithful Christians, for Mary Magdalene, Peter and Paul. For our bishops, hands and for our pastors, all those called to ministry, for teachers and sponsors, and all of the church. We praise you for your Son, O God, who saves us from sin and from evil. And on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, yeah. saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I would ask the five communion servers to come up forward at this time. As soon as we have communion, we'll have two stations. You'll be invited to move to the station that's most convenient to you.
We give you thanks, O oh God, Abba, living water, breath of life, for nourishing our roots and creating us anew in this meal. By the power of your spirit, renew us to live as your body, alive for the future of praise, empowered for decades of witness and service through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I'm going to now invite us all, because it's God's work, our hands, and we all have hands, to form a line. I'll start right here. We'll go down this driveway and around the corner into the food pantry. Please don't drive your cars while we're doing